Hi, my name's Cathy Millett, and this week we're looking at how to paint brick. So when I was looking for pictures of bricks, I just went out into the real world around me. So these are all photos from my local village, 10 minute walk through, just to see what I could find around. And there's some great examples of just bricks if you go and look. We've got everything from yellow to red bricks, dark mortar to pale mortar. So there's some real inspiration out there. We've even got flaking off paint, which is really, really good. So get out there, have a look and see what you can find around you. First of all, we're going to paint the brick. And for that, I'm just going to use some Vallejo colours. I've started already with a base coat of Halford's Red Oxide Rattle Can Spray Car Primer. And it's a lovely red coat. Obviously, when I painted this stone, I've caught some of it with other colours. But I'm going to use a couple of oranges, just, or oranges and reds, just to get the colours that I want. So I'm going to use three colours. I'm going to use clear orange and I've given them all a really good shake. I find Vallejo does need a really good shake. So I've got clear orange which is number 70956 and I've got red, just plain red which is 70947 and about equal half and half on those. And then I've got a real small um, amount of black grey. I say small because um, I just I want them to be not quite as bright but if you put too much on, it just ends up as a sludge colour. So I'm just going to mix them together. Now, bear in mind, I've already got red on here, so I'm not needing to make these look too anything, really. They just need to be cover up and give a uniform colour. And I did want my brick to be a nice orangey brick. So here we go. I'm just going to paint it on. I don't need to go into the gaps because they're going to be course at some later point the mortar gaps but where there's crumbled bricks I do need to get them on so the last thing I'm going to do is just add a few little spots of this orange into the areas where the stone has been chipped back down to brickwork. Not a huge amount, just enough to show that it was there. And probably only in a couple of places. Now if this all seems a bit bright, not to worry. We're going to let it dry well and then we'll tone it back down. So we're on to the mortar stage and this is where the bricks come to life. Now you could have painted more variety in your bricks but I want just really plain, simple, ordinary. I don't want loads of variety. And these are under bricks. They weren't fancy bricks or anything. And I like the colour, so I'm very happy with just that one coat. With that said, mortar really depends on the model of the bricks themselves. If it's really thin, fine lines, and certainly in double O scale, the first technique I'm going to show you with liquid pigments is perfect. If you're getting into larger scales, then adding in the powder pigments, which I'm also going to show you, becomes more important just to give a bit of texture. But anyway, um, this is my half dried, it's not quite dried, test piece. I'm more or less happy with it. So on to here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in liquid pigments. Now, these are liquid pigments are from Life Colour and I've got the tracks and trains, so they're not even meant for buildings. And they're a little bit, I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be, it says rail dust. I've never seen rail dust this bright yellow. But anyway, what is good about it is it sits in there and it gets all the lines. And all my subsequent um, weathering that I do with powders and pigments, if you get onto that, a lot of them will disappear as you fix them. So this makes sure there's a constant colour underneath and that water soluble pigments. Now you could probably do this with paint and I've certainly done it with paint a lot of times. But I do think it's important to have this first coat so that um, there's something underneath in all of your um, mortar lines so that whatever else happens, um, you know, there's a bit of colour in there. And the reason I like these is they're water-based. So if you have got them on the surface of the brick, it's easy enough to get them off afterwards with just a rub of your finger. Now this dries to quite a bright yellow and every now and then it's just a bit too lemon for me. 
So I've also got some of the frame dirt, but this is quite dark. So I just spot it on in places just to give a bit of variety to the colors. Um, and certainly in some of the deeper holes, just not all everywhere, but just a little bit. While it's still wet, it will just run in with the other color. Now we just need to let it dry and I'm a bit lazy. I'm well, not lazy, I'm impatient is the word, isn't it? So I'm gonna go and put a hairdryer on this. And this stage does need to be dry or the next stage doesn't work. And actually, you might be happy leaving it now as it is because it's just what you want. And in a smaller scale, actually, this is probably enough. But this is a broken wall that's had quite a lot of um, plaster on it previously and there'll be plaster in some of these gaps. So what I want to do now is to build a bit of texture into this. And it is 1 to 35. I probably, probably wouldn't do this in HO wall. I have done it, you know, um, using bicarb. But now I tend to use a um, ashes white pigment. Now, I, this is a MIG pigment. Every person who does pigment does a white pigment. So it's just a white pigment. And what you need to do is get a little bit of a brush and just brush it in. So your preceding stage does need to be dry or this won't sort of brush in properly or sort of stick in places you don't want it to and you do have to put quite a bit on because you want to fill the gaps you're almost like adding a mortar layer here so don't be afraid to um, plaster it on really now at this point it looks awful but don't worry what you need to do is just take your finger and just get it off the face of any bricks that would be smooth just rub it in and use it to firm up and just clean those bricks and make sure there's none on the face of your stone as well and you can use a sort of clean brush just to get it out of your stone It will just wash off as well. It's not a, it's not fixed in any way at this point. There are multiple ways to fix this. I, I don't think it needs a lot of fixing. It's not like these are getting handled a lot. So what I tend to do is go over them with a dilute. Um, and I tend to use a solvent at this point because it spreads through really simply. Um, acrylics often don't spread. They don't have that same... Um, ability to run through cracks so what I do is I get a um, a wash and this is a military modeling wash this is a MIG wash they're out of production but all you really need is any dilute solvent based paint any color that's in the um, slightly mortar brownish type of um, color and you want it to be really dilute so you're mostly putting on sort of dirty white spirit in some ways and what I do is I don't shake this one too much because I don't particularly want it to colour these particularly um, and then I just put it on and it looks a lot dark it dries a lot lighter than it looks when it goes on now and you just you put it round very carefully flowing it into all the gaps but not flowing it into any gaps where you don't want it stuck if you've still got powder and we can get those out later So I'm just going to go and leave these to dry now. Very simple to do. Um, give it, let it dry well. The enamels can take a while because we put them on quite thickly. You can speed it up with a hairdryer. And as always, to use your hairdryer and plastic models, you might find they warp and melt a little bit. But this is plaster. It's rock solid. So you can go and blast away with your hairdryer if you want to speed things up. So here we are, the final result. A couple of easy steps. One painting it a realistic colour, and actually I painted all this one colour, but now it does look like there's a variety of paint colours on there. If I look at it, I can see the mortars there, it's gathered in some of the places. I really like the way the colours come out, there's a bit of a mix between dark and light, and you can see where the mortar's been sort of lost on the edges and it's not sat there as much. So overall, I like combining the two techniques, putting a wash or a paint in at the beginning, and then putting a little bit of texture on with those pigments and then giving them a slight colour.